we got a little bit of a squeeze. I think we narrowed that up just a touch. It looked like it was going to, you know, kind of get on the move. And then markets do what markets do. That bad boy flushed over hard. Now we're 14 pips in the money chasing another trim. So this is how we're going to set this up. Same thing as normal. If you're new and you wonder how to trim, this is the plan. This box right here, that's my trimming window. We're 14 pips in the money. I'm looking to get to 40. This down here would be 40 pips, the bottom of the red box. The green line or the bottom of the gray box is 30 pips. That's gonna be my minimum profit window. So I'm gonna put 30 pips right there, okay? Now, how many pips out of the money will this position be when this position is in the money 30 pips? That's the question. So let's measure it out. So our stop loss would be 164 plus two pips. So minus 166. So when this position gets down here at 30 pips, I can close all of this position 425 units but i could actually trim 642. so now we're going to move on to the next position so this one would be out of the money 144 let's see if we can't move that box so it'd be 144 i add two for the spread so this would be out of the money minus 146. So then we would trim 247 units off of that one. So we'd have a double trim right there. What we're waiting for is for this position to get 40 pips in the money. Then I'm going to put a trailing stop on it, see if it'll continue on, and then trim these two positions up here. The top one will close 100%. The next one down, we're going to close 247 units off of it. That's the plan. It's been a pretty slow week. Not a lot of videos. And the reason why is because all I've done this week has danced right around this position. So on Tuesday, this is where I picked it up, which was literally like eight seconds ago in the video. But it was in the money, came back out. That was on Wednesday. And then it came back down. And on Thursday, back out. This morning, Friday, it came down and it hit this middle of the night. I was still sleeping, not trading, and it hit the goal of 40 pips. And by the time I was looking at the chart at the 7 a.m. candle for me, it had already reeled back. I mean, obviously, it would have been super cool if it had continued on, but it had reeled back and then put in a nice big blue candle, which means we just are exercising our patience. All right, since it's been a little slow, I have actually been spending some time in FX Replay this week. I think it's worthwhile to go out there and practice what you're doing. It's kind of like maybe going to the driving range hitting a bunch of shots so when you get out on the course and it matters, you are comfortable with it. Or maybe it's like hitting soccer goals or shooting free throws in basketball or maybe you play an instrument and you're practicing your uh, flutes, you know, or your your guitars. Um, I don't know, whatever you're into, there's a certain level of practice that should go into anything. Trading should be no different especially if you're interested in striving to trade with real money. You really should practice and get a handle on it. FX Replay is the what I use. The reason why is because their charting software is also trading view charting software. So what I'm trading in real world and what I'm practicing on are similar or the same. And also, I just really like it. You can go back. Instead of going back like 250,000 candles or something like that um, on TradingView, you can literally go back to like the early 2000s. So I'm going to show you how to create a session. This is my de my uh, back testing dashboard right here. I'm going to create a new session. That's hitting this button right here. It pops up a little window. This is where you can put whatever starting balance you want. It's really an arbitrary number. So you can see over here, I put like 100, 500, 300. Just put some random number, in my opinion. 
um, put whatever you want. So I usually put like 300,000. And the reason why is I'm going to trade whatever amount of units I want to trade. I just don't want it to the system to tell me, oh, you can't trade that many units. So if you put like $1,000 in there, the system itself is going to potentially limit you on how big of a position you can take if you want to practice trading a bigger position. And then for me, I always trade the USD CAD or the CAD. So I come down here. I'm going to check mark the CAD. So that's my pair. And here, this is where you get to choose where you want to start. I mean, if you want to start at January of 24, you can just come back here and hit January 1st of 2024. Um, or you could go like all the way back to, I don't know, like say you wanted to practice from like 2015 january put in january 1st 2015 and practice through that era um i like to often go back and retrade the last quarter so i'm going to put in january 2024 on this january 1st 2024 and i'm going to put the end date as of yesterday can't put today and then I'm going to call this, uh, let's call it first quarter 2024. Boom. All right. So that's our first quarter. Once you have it in your queue as a session, then you can go in here. You can actually click on it. It gives you some things like you can edit the name. You can duplicate it. You can look at the analytics. You can journal, continue, or delete. So if you get a whole bunch in sessions, just go in there and delete them, get rid of them. Um, and then to go and do that session, you're going to hit play now. And then it's going to pop up the screen right here. This is uh, your window that you're going to trade off of. And it shows right here. Oh, I put three million. Whoa. You know, whatever. Get used to trading huge lots or wins. Um, and then it just pop takes you right to the day before or the day of you're going to trade. All right, a couple of things that I think is worthwhile noting that make practicing better. If you hit this little go to button right here, you can skip to next session, next day open, next silver bullet session, next news event. There's a few options. I go in here and I hit custom setting and I change the next day open settings to 0900, which would be the 7 a.m. candle for me. And that's where I want to advance. That's generally the candle I start looking at or getting on board. So whatever candle you're going to start on regularly in the real world with live money, you want to set this up. So you're not like arbitrarily trading candles or the middle of the night or a session that you wouldn't normally trade. And then when you're when you're practicing and it gets later in the day, instead of having to sit there and watch this thing play out, I'll hit go to next day open. And then it'll just advance it. So this right here is the 7 a.m. candle on January 2nd, 2024. That is where I would start trading is around the 7 a.m. candle. Another thing I do is this right up here. I set this to one minute and I usually pull this slider over to about four. So when I hit play, it's like four times regular speed. So it is a little bit faster than real time. But I do leave it on a one minute candle. That way you can see the candles move and the markets move. And I'll show you that here in a minute. One thing that's a little bit different um, as of recently is FX Replay used to work in units and now they work in lots. And so for you lot traders out there, this will be perfect for you. You units traders out there, you just ought to realize that one lot is equal to 100,000 units. So you might have to do some quick math along the way. So if you're going to trade, say, I don't know, uh, 300,000 units, then that would be three lots. So the market has gone up. I would say it's overextended. If I was a 7 a.m. candle, I'd be like, oh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell one lot right there. That's a live position now. Um, and I'm going to set a take profit on that for 10 pips. Just a little scalper on that. 
but I'm also going to place an order of a buy stop um, of one lot to balance to hedge if it doesn't go right at 1.33317. So that would be 30 pips above that position. And now what we're wanting to see if we can get 10 pips out of the money or if we are going to hit our buy stop. All right, so let's start playing the market. Remember, this is based off of one minute at about a four speed. So kind of moves it up. We're already out of the money. Dang it, I suck at calling the market. Oh, I can't even do it right when I'm back testing. I, I, I really would encourage you just to let this play instead of really fast forward because it gives you maybe a faster sense of the market moving, but it still allows it forces you to sit there and watch the candle and make decisions based off what that candle is doing. You know, it's bouncing up, it's bouncing down. You have the emotion of being like 30 pips out of the money and you're like, oh, I'm so dumb. I called the market wrong again. Ah, oh. so we're still at the 7 a.m. candle, but it's coming up on the 11 a.m. candle. Um, it's about to switch over here in just a few seconds. So here we are. Now it's the 11 a.m. candle. We have pending orders though, so I'm gonna keep watching this. Normally around 11, I take off for lunch because, you know, I'm hungry. But where I have pending orders, I'm stuck at the desk. I'm working overtime now. And boom. All right, so we now hedged. What we need to do is take off our take profit position. That's gone now. And now we have a hedged position. So, I'm going to move these over for our kind of visual aids, if you will. These are the two scenarios we're looking for next. Either a long position to get in the money or a short position to get in the money. Okay, one thing I would do now that I'm hedged and balanced is um, in my practice session, because I would do this in real life, I would go to lunch or wherever I'm going to go. So I'm going to advance this to the next day open. So now it's Wednesday morning and this is the 7 a.m. candle. Wednesday, January 3rd, 2024. This is the 7 a.m. candle. And you wake up and you hit this and you're like, oh yeah, I'm giddy. This baby's in the money. We're in the green zone. We have not quite got 40 pips in the money because that's where I'm going for is 40. This green bar, that's going to be 30 pips in the money and I'm going to put a trailing stop on that. That's what the, these will visualize. So let's advance this and see if we can get above that mark. Ooh, it's just dancing there. I know you're thinking to yourself, I want that. I want that bad, but pulling off it says not today son it's close we're gonna get a new candle right here there it is there's the new candle it's close and it just literally takes off so we're not there it just seems like it's low volume i'm going to go ahead and go to lunch and i'm going to advance this to the next day open all it did during the night is just sold off. You can see it just came down, sold off, and then you wake up and you're almost right back in the exact same spot. So is this today? Is this the day we're going to make some money? All right, let's get this thing moving forward and see if we can advance it up above that 40 pip mark. Coming down, hit the 30 pip mark again. Didn't go beyond our 40. It's pulling back off. About to get the 11 a.m. candle. Right there. That's 11 a.m. Did the exact same thing it was doing yesterday. It's pulling back off. It's not doing anything. So I'm going to go to lunch yet again. And I'm going to advance this by going to next day open. Oof. So this time it went up above in the night and came back down and we're literally right back at the same spot. All right, is this our day? So now it's Friday. Let's move our visual aid over, kind of reset that. Because the whole week's gone by a lot of candles. So just slide this over and, and make sure you're, you're kind of visually seeing what you're looking at. All right, hit play again. Oh, that thing took a big old 
dookie on itself. Oh, that was not the candle we wanted, right? Totally flushed. Oh, why you do this to us? Remember, we're 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 no worse for wear. We've had the same negative three hundred unrealized gain since the day we hedged it up. We're no worse worse for wear. Market can do whatever it wants to do. We're just waiting for it to move into a green zone. So remember, this is the whole first week of January twenty twenty four. It's probably almost exactly how you trade it if you had been flat and started out the the, the new year with new positions. All right, it's coming up on the 11 a.m. candle. We're about to get the new candle. Again, nothing nothing exciting is happening. So I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to go next day open. Whoa, here we are. We finally, we finally broke through. So this is Monday, January 8th, 7 a.m. candle, okay? This guy right here is in the money, 61 pips. Nice. Our short position is out of the money. 92 pips. I'm going to trim this with the profit off of this guy. We're going to trim this guy down here by 0.587 units. So we're going to click on close the position. We're going to do a partial close of 0.5870 units. Okay. Makes sense. Hit save. That's now 0 0.4130. Okay, now in our long position, I'm going to put on a stop. And I'm going to do this 10 pips below the market. So the market over here is at 1.33937. So we're going to put this in at 1.33837. So that'll be 10 pips below where the market's at. The ID behind this is now we want the market to continue on, get some continuation, and in FX replay, you can't do a true trailing stop, so you have to manually move it. Let's just see what the market does here. It's coming down. It's moving up just a little bit. Ooh, there we go. So it moved up to 042, so we're going to move this to 942. So we got a little bit off that trailing stop, a little bit of continuation, and now it's picked it up. Okay, so now we are completely unhedged. We trim this one down to 0.41300, and the long position, we let it continue on, grabbed another eight or nine pips out of it on the continuation before it came back and hit its stop. So we've got a decision. What are we going to do right here? Are we going to balance the hedge? Are we going to trade to capacity? It's, it's totally up to you. Um, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to sell 0 0.5870. Boom. It's going to sell, and I'm going to put this in for a 10 pip take profit. So hit save right there. And then to protect that, I'm going to place an order right here for a buy stop of one unit because 0.5587 and 0.413 equals one. And I'll put that 30 pips above the market, 1.34264. That's going to be our buy stop. And I'm also going to put in a buy limit. This is going to be for 0 0.4130. And I'm going to put that at the exact same price as my take profit on this position. Okay, I'm going to hit save. So now I have a full capacity of one full unit in the market to go down in the short side. If it goes down 10 pips, it'll close this position out and then rehedge at 0.41300. If I'm wrong and it goes up, then I will hedge up here at one and I'll be back to a one to one hedge, one unit to one unit. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, it went down, it hit our take profit. So it closed out our realized gain position and re-hedged. So now I need to get rid of this buy stop order. 
We'll cancel that. And so now our hedge looks like this. We have 0.431 units on the long side. We have 0.413 units on the short side. That's how you can practice. You can practice putting limit orders in, buy stop orders, run your trailing stop, practice the market, having your visual aids, and, and get used to going through the components of deciding whether you're going to balance your hedge or balance the capacity, all of those different scenarios. That's why I practice. I think it's fun. Okay, so now we've practiced. You've got on FX Replay. I would totally invite you to go check that out. I have a code for a discount rate down below. I would encourage you to go check that out and practice. Um, it gives you, I think, 15% off, so totally worthwhile. But uh, I would really suggest signing up for FX Replay or some other backtesting software and practice trading. All right, let's get into some comments now. Let's see what's going on out there in the world of the comments section. Um, all right, one person wrote, in all caps, no need to yell. We're all friends here. No need to yell. Can we try this strategy with only trimming? Remove the squeeze part. Just trim, 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 and trim. And the answer is no, you can't. If all you do is trim then all you do is spread the hedge out. I guess potentially you could just trim, 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 put units back in the middle, catch a clean trade, and have it wipe out. But I think you're going to have more success if you squeeze or run a trailing stop or something along those lines. You, you got to be able to make money at the point of trim and also catch a, a few clean trades along the way. Which probably takes me into this next question. This even turned into be quite the conversation around it. Uh, so one person wrote, Hey Chad, you are in unrealized losses right now because you have been losing your trades and all you're doing with your hedge strategy is moving positions from one place to another. That's what would be happen if all you do is trim, 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 trim. You're just moving positions from one place to another. I think he's right. I know. I think he's trying to be a little bit snarky. Fact of the matter is, you're not wrong. There is no advantage in doing this, since when being in two op opposite positions is the same as being in no positions at all, there is no advantage. This is where we're going to have to disagree. I don't even think we have to agree to disagree. We can literally just disagree. You say there is no advantage in doing this. I say trimming that hedge brings units out of the market that you can use somewhere else to potentially get a clean trade. When you decide to close profiting positions and trim the losing one, you're still net losing. That's true. That's just math. Excellent. Thank you for pointing that out. If you don't get any clean trades, you'll just be losing. And at the end of the day, you'll just need many clean trades to come back from the losses. Does this make sense? Dude, that's exactly what I've been saying. At the end of the day, you've got to catch some clean trades. What do you do when you are wrong? That's my question to you. If you're gonna, if you're gonna call out the thing and say this doesn't work, this doesn't make any sense. When you're wrong, are you suggesting to take hard losses? I'm suggesting to hedge. Work yourself out of the hedge. Delay the loss and offset it with the profit. Now, if all you did is trim, 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 I 100% agree. All you're doing is pushing the loss out without anything to offset it. Until you get those units back and trade them on the inside. and get a couple clean trades. And there was quite a discussion about it. So like this guy right here wrote, the point is to always be in drawdown because the entire process of hedging and trimming increases the account balance. Essentially, you incur drawdown, gradually pay it back whilst pocketing, po pocketing a little bit and rinse and repeat. This is the hedging money management side of it. You got to catch good trades. You got to squeeze. You got to do all those things. But... This allows you to work your account. Potentially, this guy up here has never ran his own business. He's never had to go buy something, have a loss, and then resell it for a profit. That's essentially hedging. We're running a business. This isn't a get-rich-quick scheme. 
Um, if you just bought buns and then threw them out in the dumpster because you didn't have anyone come in that day and buy a burger, you, you're right. You took a hard loss, move on, buy buns the next day. Nobody comes in and buys a burger, so you throw them out in the dumpster. Now you have two days of hard losses. Or you could buy buns and wait till somebody comes and buys a burger. I want to point out one thing that this person wrote. It is not a get rich overnight strategy, but most traders only lose money. That this is the reason why I hedge this way. More times than not, I'm wrong at calling the market. I'll be the first to admit it. If I say it's going up, it's almost assuredly going to go down. And I just lose all the time. Hedging has taken out that worry. Going back to this top guy's comment, let's say that you were running hard stops and you went five, six, seven, eight in a row of hard stops. You also lost money. Eventually, you're out of money running hard stops. You might feel like really good. Well, I ran a hard stop. I was only risking five or 10% of my account. And every time it loses, you risk another 10%. And eventually, you just depleted your account by losing 10% at the time. Hedging allows you to work those positions, bring units back to the market, make another shot at taking a clean trade. Um, one person wrote, that's not even to mention the swaps and pile up. I quit. Yes, you're right. The cost of doing business is overwhelming. I think you should quit. Instead of running a burger business, you should be the guy flipping the burgers.